Afterwards, I was very glad that the coolie had been killed. It put me legally in the right and gave me a sufficient pretext for shooting the elephant. I often wondered whether any of the others grasped that I had done it solely to avoid looking like a fool. Yeah. What do you guys think? Does anyone feel sick? Sorry about that. Um, but that means that you have uh, a soul. So uh, that's a good thing, right? I mean, unless you don't believe in a soul and then whatever. But maybe there's something <laughs> to you <laughs> more than just uh, You have a conscience, there we go. That's it. So I got a couple questions. We'll write your answers a bit. And obviously the first thing you're always gonna do in any scenario is you go to the text. You go to the information, right? You don't just draw blindly from your emotions about it, but then still you use those things to factor out how, how you feel as well as what a value claim could be about. So, so what are some value arguments you could make about this whole scenario? What are some of the criteria that Orwell uses to make his decision? And why does he actually shoot the elephant? Yeah, right, for like just at least a minute. What do you think? What are some value arguments? Or claims, at least? He was wrong to shoot. It was wrong, yeah. What's Orwell's perspective on that one? Does he think it was right or wrong? It's kind of in between. Does he use different criteria for that decision? He uses the fact that it killed something. It killed a human. Oh yeah, he says coolly though. So you guys got that that kind of stuff was like derogatory term. There's some other language he uses that, yeah, it might be hard, but you can get it in context. He even builds that argument in like two seconds, how that gives him a reason why he had to kill the elephant. Had to do it. Already killed another human. It could have killed another. Was it gonna kill another human? No. No, it was done. Yeah, so this is wrong because why? For your own argument. Yeah, I Pride because he was afraid they blocked it, not because he thought that it posed any more threat. He felt an expectation from the crowd that this is mm -hmm. what they expected him to do. What do you guys think about this story? Gross. Good or bad, though? So this one white dude has all the power, and like all the other people around him that have different color skin don't have any power. Hmm. Does he have all the power? No. He's only shot the elephant. He's a puppet. He says, so think about that. Yeah, is it a good story or not? Now we're just talking aesthetics for a second. Yeah, you can like something and be disgusted by it, can't you? I mean, understand, there's a lot going on here. George Orwell, you know who he is, right? He wrote 1984. This is an essay. This is more of a, this is a true story. This really happened. He really was a sahib or a police officer in Burma, Myanmar. When does this even take place? So if he lived from like 1903 till 1950. 1936? Yeah, he published it then. Oh. But think about when he publishes it too. What was happening around that time? He's British. Imperialism, Imperialism is dying down. When does it fully die? This is like colonization where all the European countries had colonized all the third world countries and pretty much used them for their resources, control them, right? And so Britain is one of the main ones for that, or they've got power here and, you know, they exert dominance over them and use their resources and stuff like that. And so he's there. Does he like that he's there? No. No. It's, it's pretty complicated, actually, so I'm not going to make you read this, but maybe I'll have you use it for a response paper option that you get, like in about half an hour when I put it on the screen. This one right here. What are the top 10 philosophical ideas that everyone should understand? So this was just like a question thrown out on Quora and there was like answers for years. You can go through and see the top 100 responses that people had and some were dumb, some were all right, 
And then they decided this was the best one. And so now it's actually published as its own article. But it's just this Nordic law student dude, Alex But Butso. I have no idea who he is, but he wrote this out like an essay. And he goes over all these different philosophical concepts. And it's funny how many of them are actually in this. Orwell's essay here is not just a story of what happened at the time. There are so many things where he's contemplating what he did and going back. And is he happy with how he handled it? No. No? He's not. There's so many complicated issues. There's colonization. He's representing an empire that he doesn't even like. Also, this is right before World War II. Hitler's definitely in power already. He wrote 1984 and 48 and then died. And there's, he's got a lot of real experience with this kind of stuff. And he's definitely thought about it a lot. And does he look good in the story? No, he does not look good in the story, and that should tell you something about what he's doing here. He's not telling you a story at a party while taking keg stands to tell you how freaking awesome he was when he took down that elephant and then took pictures of it and stuff like that so he could, you know, impress girls like he thinks girls would be impressed by that or something. This is much different than that kind of story, isn't it? He's making himself look bad. And so that means there's definitely a reason for that. And Michael, you kept pointing to his own rationalization. Well, he says this, and all we can work with for a lot of this stuff is it's still his perspective, but he's also trying to look back and see it as objectively as possible. And, and we see some insights that he, he thinks about this. Honestly, this story flashes through my mind at least once a week. There's something here that I, I look to and I'll repeat the wording back to myself to remind myself about maybe the way that I'm making decisions or how I'm operating in a certain scenario. Is it about what people see me as or is it about the actual decision I'm making? What is swaying my decision, how I look or my actual ideals about it? And there's, there's some very crucial claims that he makes in here that like, I've, I've never heard any way to argue against them really. Um, I think they hit the nail on the head. He's talking about the whole colonization thing. It was at this moment on page, well, it says four at the top, and it's on the right side there. This is probably the most thick paragraph for introspection. So right around six line down there. Uh, and it was at this moment as I stood there with the rifle in my hands that I first grasped the hollowness, the futility of the white man's dominion in the East. Uh, here was I the white man with his gun standing in front of an unarmed native crowd. So like you guys were saying, I mean, these are people who don't even have power. And he not only has power and authority, he's holding a freaking elephant gun. He's holding this huge gun. Like who has the power? And yet how come he is so influenced by the people around him? Is it the sheer number of them? Is it not losing face? What is this about the face? He talks a lot about faces here. He says they have yellow faces. He talks about mask. What does he say there? Did anyone underline that part? It's like my favorite line. Yeah. Understand this is like a, a thing that happens to almost everyone. So the white man somehow turns tyrant. It is, it is his own freedom he destroys. He wears a mask. So you put on a mask. You hang out with the jocks and you put on the mask of a jock. When you, you start doing a thing, you make it into habits and then you end up becoming the thing. People like you when you drink. You're a lot nicer, a lot cooler of a person when you drink. So you drink more and then more. And then next thing you know, you're an alcoholic. Whatever, that's just one example, you know, and that's one where it's obviously bad, but how about this? People, you know, think you look better when you wear tight-fitting clothes or when you wear your makeup like this or whatever it is. And so you start doing that thing and then, I mean, you're literally wearing a mask in that case. Or if it's more about meeting the expectations that people have of you. Yeah. Where it's like... Absolutely. They didn't really have a singular thought towards Orwell himself, really. 
unless these people like recognize them from the street or whatnot, all they see is he's just another tyrant. Like gun, is yeah. Go shoot the elephant, and then he's like, "Well, I guess I gotta shoot the elephant then. Yeah. You want me to shoot him? I'm expected to do this thing, so I'll do it." Well, and they hate him because of what he represents, not because of who he is yeah. as a person, right? They hate him because of the clothes he's wearing that's, and the badge and the things that say that I control you, I'm the authority over you, even though this isn't my own country kind of thing. So they hate him just for that alone, even though he doesn't even like it himself. He thinks it's bullshit, but he's just trying to get paid. So there's that whole thing, but they don't know that, and he's not going to tell them any of that because then they'll try to you know, push him around with that too. So he's caught in this very interesting situation where it's like awkward on all sides. He doesn't even agree with it, and yet he puts on the mask and he does the thing that he's supposed to do. And then at what point, after practicing that over and over and over again, where we actually our identities are created through practicing things, through becoming, you become something. You, you don't become a skater by just putting on skater clothes. You have to actually skate, you know? So you, like, you practice the thing, and then you eventually become it, but it's through that continual practice of it. There's so many areas that that actually applies to. What about all the other dudes? So afterwards, by the way, was that like just horrible? with the dying and not dying thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was really bad. And I think going through it all and going into all the details is 100% necessary for him for us to feel it. I don't think, I mean, in some cases, you know, on screen, talking aesthetics here, uh, when there's like a rape scene on a movie or something like that, or a TV show, you know what's happening. You know the power of it. You know what it means and how it makes you feel and stuff like that. They don't have to show it for 15 minutes and drag it out and show all the details. They could show you something very quick. Yeah, there's a difference between including something in order to evoke uh, speculative emotions mm -hmm. and glorifying something. So if you were watching yeah. a movie, 30 minutes of it is the details of this rape scene. It starts to, it's not so much the writer going, does this make you feel bad? You should feel bad. It starts to become, this guy kind of, I think he has a, a thing for this. I think this is like his fetish or something. He's getting off of this. Yes. This is, and you can make arguments towards that depending on, right? Well, how long is that scene? And how much are they showing? And why are they showing it? Does it help the carry purpose? the storyline? What is the purpose? What does it do? Exactly. Is there a scene in the first episode of the show you like? Or yeah. Is it for anything? Or is it at the very end of the season? Is it happening yeah. to one of the main characters? And does that yeah. drive on like their arc? Are we talking about the same show right now? Are we? <laughs> no, are you thinking of a show? I'm thinking of a show. I'm thinking oh, of a show, I'm too. I'm thinking of the same show, though. What show are you I'm thinking of a Japanese cartoon. So oh, probably no. Not. No, not that one. Huh? I see reasons to watch it. Is that... Don't that ruin it, man. I haven't <laughs> seen... No, that's all right. I didn't want to... Yeah, obviously. Um, no, I was thinking Outlander. Outlander. Has anyone seen that show? Yeah, we're talking value here. A uh, really well written show with like really good budget, really good acting, really good dialogue, every little thing, right? Awesome. And then the last episode of the first season, spoiler alert, because I don't give a shit, <laughs> is like one long rape scene. And it's like, like, where are your hands, lady who wrote this? Where are your hands right now while you write, while you're watching? Do you get what I'm saying here? Like, are you getting off on this? Why did you write it like that? Because you didn't have to. And I looked it up and people were like, yeah, the book's way longer. Than, and it was like a freaking hour and it was so agonizing. And I'm like, when's it going to be over? And I'm trying to like speed through and it's still going. And I'm thinking, I got the point. Why did you have to make And then you like, yeah, they push it. So it's really creepy, really creepy. And then you realize this is fantasy. Uh, this is the kind of this lady must get off on this thing and you would have to build that's a pretty strong statement that's a pretty strong claim of value to make i would have to go into extreme details of of things that i can draw from from that they are facts that i can pull from well this scene is this long and you could definitely show it in this short a time and then the way that the the 
protagonist is made to like the thing somehow after a while, and then you start muddling the lines of rape, and then, and then you're just, see, so there's so much, so much going on that you would have to point to that could be evidence that is fact, and then could be stuff where you start having to stretch a little bit more, but you're still using plenty of reason to explain that out. Uh, I don't know how I got on. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's all, it's all there to help. What did you guys think about the last paragraph before we take a break? There were endless discussions about the shooting of the elephant. Because everyone else has criteria too, don't they? So they start, capitalism, we're weighing it, costs. Well, so we've got several perspectives. We've got the owner, and then we've got the Europeans, and of course the people, but they're, they're not really here. Uh, and the, the Europeans are broken up into older and younger. What do you think about that? So why do you think the older men would say he was right, but then the younger men would say he's wrong? Maybe traditional. Traditional. So you've got the young capitalists who are like money, money, money. Like you could have had much more money off of this thing's worth more money than the guy, right? You can work that animal, so there's just pure money. Why would the old men? Because they're trying to keep their hold of the town, and it looks really bad if they let elephants rampage and kill people. The natives aren't going to be very happy with their overlords if they're not taking care yeah. of them. Your so visage of power has to be absolute. So whereas the younger guys are thinking about an immediate paycheck, the older dudes are thinking of the long run. Yeah, and the, and the power is much more important than the money. And it's, it's crazy, though. And yet it doesn't say that word for word here, but you could come to that conclusion pretty easily. I mean, understanding not just the, the content in here, but the context that he does tell you about. He, he points to the context, and then now you can look more in depth into the context and get more uh, secure with your findings uh, and, and being able to make such a claim like that. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's sick thinking about the, the way that the elephant dies and it's just like not dying because he is incompetent. He can't kill it the way he should. Like we're not even, this isn't humane at all. There's nothing that's good about this whole scenario. It's pretty much being tortured to death. And yet, even after that, on top of that, the, the way that the people react afterwards is even more sickening. Depending. Yeah, it's freaking, so it's ugly. Yeah, and then everyone else is not only, yeah, they want it, they don't have TV, you know, there's it's no TV yet, so like this is entertainment, but then also it's food, right? Uh, no one's going to stop you from running. That guy wouldn't even be able to use up all the, the meat from that elephant. So the whole village is like having at it and getting to eat for like a couple days or something like that and being able to use all the parts of it. So at least it all got used, but that is, uh, yeah, pretty sick. And there's, so there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. But yeah, once a week, uh, the whole idea of wearing the mask and my face growing to fit the mask that question comes into my own mind. In a cold uh, sweat? Yeah, well, in not a cold head. sweat, but... With your hand pressed against the mirror? <laughs> with like some like background music, yeah. No, it's not so romantic. <laughs> Everything's normally, you know, after I do something that I can't take back, kind of thing. <laughs>